Lesson 13 The Resurrection of Moses Sabbath Afternoon December 18 Many years, Moses and Aaron had stood side by side in their cares and labors. Together they had breasted unnumbered dangers and had shared together the signal blessing of God. But the time was at hand when they must be separated. Somewhere beyond the mountains of Edom was the path leading to the Promised Land, that land whose blessings Moses and Aaron were not to enjoy. No rebellious feelings found a place in their hearts, no expression of murmuring escaped their lips, yet a solemn sadness rested upon their countenances as they remembered what had debarred them from the inheritance of their fathers. For his sin at Kadesh, Aaron was denied the privilege of officiating as God's high priest in Canaan, of offering the first sacrifice in the goodly land, and thus consecrating the inheritance of Israel. Moses was to continue to bear his burden in leading the people to the very borders of Canaan. He was to come within sight of the promised land, but was not to enter it. Had these servants of God, when they stood before the rock at Kadesh, borne unmurmuringly the test there brought upon them, how different would have been their future! A wrong act can never be undone. It may be that the work of a lifetime will not recover what has been lost in a single moment of temptation or even thoughtlessness. Patriarchs and Prophets, pages 425 and 426. The present is a season of solemn privilege and sacred trust. If the servants of God keep faithfully the trust given to them, great will be their reward when the Master shall say, Give an account of thy stewardship. Luke chapter 16, verse 2. The earnest toil, the unselfish work, the patient, persevering effort will be abundantly rewarded. Jesus will say, Henceforth, I call you not servants, but friends. See John chapter 15, verse 15. The approval of the Master is not given because of the greatness of the work performed, but because of fidelity in all that has been done. It is not the results we attain, but the motives from which we act that weigh with God. He prizes goodness and faithfulness above all else. Gospel Workers, page 267 I entreat you to move with an eye single to the glory of God. Let His power be your dependence, His grace your strength. By study of the scriptures and earnest prayer, seek to obtain clear conceptions of your duty and then faithfully perform it. It is essential that you cultivate faithfulness in little things, and in so doing, you will acquire habits of integrity in greater responsibilities. The little incidents of everyday life often pass without our notice, but it is these things that shape the character. Every event of life is great for good or for evil. The mind needs to be trained by daily tests that it may acquire power to stand in any difficult position. In the days of trial and of peril, you will need to be fortified to stand firmly for the right, independent of every opposing influence. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, page 561. Sunday, December 19. The Sin of Moses. Part 1. In all their wanderings, the children of Israel were tempted to attribute to Moses the special work of God, the mighty miracles that had been wrought to deliver them from Egyptian bondage. They charged Moses with bringing them out of the land of Egypt. It was true that God had manifested himself wonderfully to Moses. He had specially favored him with his presence. To him God had revealed his exceeding glory. Upon the mount he had taken him into a sacred nearness to himself and had talked with him as a man speaks to a friend. But the Lord had given evidence after evidence that it was he himself who was working for their deliverance. By saying, 
Must we fetch you water out of this rock? Moses virtually said to the people that they were correct in believing that he himself was doing the mighty works that had been done in their behalf. This made it necessary for God to prove to Israel that his admission was not founded on fact. To dispel forever from the minds of the Israelites the idea that a man was leading them, God found it necessary to allow their leader to die before they entered the land of Canaan. Ellen G. White comments in the Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 1, pages 1115 and 1116. The servants of Christ are not to act out the dictates of the natural heart. They need to have close communion with God, lest under provocation self rise up, and they pour forth a torrent of words that are unbefitting, that are not as dew or the still showers that refresh the withering plants. This is what Satan wants them to do, for these are his methods. It is the dragon that is wroth. It is the spirit of Satan that is revealed in anger and accusing. But God's servants are to be representatives of him. He desires them to deal only in the currency of heaven, the truth that bears his own image and superscription. The power by which they are to overcome evil is the power of Christ. The glory of Christ is their strength. They are to fix their eyes upon his loveliness. Then they can present the gospel with divine tact and gentleness. The Desire of Ages, page 353. Through the help that Christ can give, we shall be able to learn to bridle the tongue. Sorely as he was tried on the point of hasty and angry speech, he never once sinned with his lips. With patient calmness, he met the sneers, the taunts, and the ridicule of his fellow workers at the carpenter's bench. Instead of retorting angrily, he would begin to sing one of David's beautiful psalms, and his companions, before realizing what they were doing, would unite with him in the hymn. What a transformation would be wrought in this world if men and women today would follow Christ's example in the use of words. Our High Calling, page 291. Monday, December 20. The Sin of Moses, Part 2. Some would regard Moses' sin as one that should be lightly passed over, but God sees not as man sees. When within sight of the hills of Canaan, the Israelites murmured because the stream that had flowed wherever they encamped ceased. The cries of the people were directed against Moses and Aaron, whom they accused of bringing them into the wilderness to perish. The leaders went to the door of the tabernacle and fell on their faces. Moses was directed, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. Numbers chapter 20 Verse 8. The two brothers went on before the multitude, Moses with the rod of God in his hand. They were now aged men. Long had they borne with the rebellion and obstinacy of Israel, but now at last even the patience of Moses gave way, and instead of speaking to the rock as God had commanded him, he smote it twice with the rod. The water gushed forth in abundance to satisfy the host, but a great wrong had been done. Moses had spoken from irritated feeling. Shall we bring water? He questioned, as if the Lord would not do what he promised. Ye believed me not, the Lord declared to the two brothers, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Verse 12, The Upward Look, page 299. The very time to exercise faith is when we feel destitute of the Spirit. When thick clouds of darkness seem to hover over the mind, then is the time to let living faith pierce the darkness and scatter the clouds. True faith rests on the promises contained in the Word of God, and those only who obey that Word can claim its glorious promises. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. John chapter 15 verse 7 Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, 
because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. 1 John chapter 3, verse 22. I asked the angel why there was no more faith and power in Israel. He said, Ye let go of the arm of the Lord too soon. Press your petitions to the throne and hold on by strong faith. The promises are sure. Believe ye receive the things ye ask for, and ye shall have them. Early Writings, pages 72 and 73. Tuesday, December 21. The Death of Moses. The Lord announced to Moses that the appointed time for the possession of Canaan was at hand, and as the aged prophet stood upon the heights overlooking the river Jordan and the Promised Land, he gazed with deep interest upon the inheritance of his people. Would it be possible that the sentence pronounced against him for his sin at Kadesh might be revoked? With deep earnestness he pleaded, O Lord God, Thou hast begun to show Thy servant Thy greatness and Thy mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or in earth that can do according to Thy works and according to Thy might? I pray Thee, let me go over and see the good land that is beyond Jordan, that goodly mountain, and Lebanon. Deuteronomy chapter 3 verses 24 to 27. The answer was, Let it suffice thee, speak no more unto me of this matter. Get thee up into the top of Pisgah, and lift up thine eyes westward, and northward, and southward, and eastward, and behold it with thine eyes, for thou shalt not go over this Jordan. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 462 it was not the will of God that anyone should go up with Moses to the top of Pisgah. There he stood, upon a high prominence on Pisgah's top, in the presence of God and heavenly angels. After he had viewed Canaan to his satisfaction, he lay down, like a tired warrior, to rest. Sleep came upon him, but it was the sleep of death. Angels took his body and buried it in the valley. The Israelites could never find the place where he was buried. His secret burial was to prevent the people from sinning against the Lord by committing idolatry over his body. Satan exulted that he had succeeded in causing Moses to sin against God. For this transgression, Moses came under the dominion of death. If he had continued faithful and his life had not been marred with that one transgression in failing to give God the glory of bringing water from the rock, he would have entered the promised land and would have been translated to heaven without seeing death. The Story of Redemption, page 173 Christ became one with humanity that humanity might become one in spirit and life with him. By virtue of this union and obedience to the word of God, his life becomes their life. He says to the penitent, I am the resurrection and the life. Death is looked upon by Christ as sleep, silence, darkness, sleep. He speaks of it as if it were of little moment. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me, he says, shall never die. And to the believing one, death is but a small matter. With him, to die is but to sleep. The same power that raised Christ from the dead will raise his church and glorify it with Christ as his bride above all principalities, above all powers, above every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the heavenly courts, the world above. The victory of the sleeping saints will be glorious on the morning of the resurrection. My Life Today, page 295. Wednesday, December 22, The Resurrection of Moses Christ, with the angels that buried Moses, came down from heaven after he had remained in the grave a short time and resurrected him and took him to heaven. As Christ and the angels approached the grave, Satan and his angels appeared at the grave and were guarding the body of Moses lest it should be removed. As Christ and his angels drew nigh, 
Satan resisted their approach, but was compelled by the glory and power of Christ and his angels to fall back. Satan claimed the body of Moses because of his one transgression, but Christ meekly referred him to his father, saying, The Lord rebuke thee. Jude chapter 1 verse 9 Christ told Satan that he knew Moses had humbly repented of this one wrong, that no stain rested upon his character, and that his name in the heavenly book of records stood untarnished. Then Christ resurrected the body of Moses, which Satan had claimed. The Story of Redemption, pages 173 and 174. God did not create evil. He only made the good, which was like himself. But Satan would not be content to know the will of God and do it. His curiosity was on the stretch to know that which God had not designed he should know. Evil, sin, and death were not created by God. They are the result of disobedience which originated in Satan. But the knowledge of evil now in the world was brought in through the cunning of Satan. These are very hard and expensive lessons, but men will learn them and many will never be convinced that it is bliss to be ignorant of a certain kind of knowledge which arises from unsatisfied desires and unholy aims. The sons and daughters of Adam are fully as inquisitive and presumptuous as was Eve in seeking forbidden knowledge. They gain an experience a knowledge which God never designed they should have, and the result will be, as it was to our first parents, the loss of their Eden home. When will human beings learn that which is demonstrated so thoroughly before them? Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 503. The same merciful Savior who appointed those temporal cities of refuge has by the shedding of his own blood provided for the transgressors of God's law a sure retreat into which they may flee for safety from the second death. No power can take out of his hands the souls that go to him for pardon. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us, that we might have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 34, and Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 516. Thursday, December 23 The Resurrection of Us All The Apostle Paul carried the minds of the Corinthian brethren forward to the triumphs of the resurrection morn when all the sleeping saints are to be raised henceforth to live forever with their Lord. Behold, the Apostle declared, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Glorious is the triumph awaiting the faithful. The apostle, realizing the possibilities before the Corinthian believers, sought to set before them that which uplifts from the selfish and the sensual and glorifies life with the hope of immortality. Earnestly he exhorted them to be true to their high calling in Christ. My beloved brethren, he pleaded, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The Acts of the Apostles, pages 320 and 321. To the believer, death is but a small matter. Christ speaks of it as if it were of little moment. If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death, he shall never taste of death. To the Christian, death is but a sleep, a moment of silence and darkness. 
The life is hid with Christ in God, and when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. John chapter 8, verses 51 and 52, and Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. The voice that cried from the cross, It is finished, was heard among the dead. It pierced the walls of sepulchres and summoned the sleepers to arise. Thus will it be when the voice of Christ shall be heard from heaven. That voice will penetrate the graves and unbar the tombs, and the dead in Christ shall arise. At the Savior's resurrection, a few graves were opened, but at his second coming, all the precious dead shall hear his voice and shall come forth to glorious immortal life. The same power that raised Christ from the dead will raise his church and glorify it with him above all principalities, above all powers, above every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. The Desire of Ages, page 787. In the very day when the silver cord is loosed and the golden bowl broken, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 6, man's thoughts perish. They that go down to the grave are in silence. They know no more of anything that is done under the sun. Job chapter 14 verse 21. Blessed rest for the weary righteous. Time, be it long or short, is but a moment to them. They sleep. They are awakened by the trump of God to a glorious immortality. The Great Controversy, page 549. For further reading, Reflecting Christ, God's Children to be Light Bearers, page 319, and In Heavenly Places, Only One Redeemer, page 13.